Okay, so we are recording and today we are talking about uh, graph theory and some introduction to graph theory. These are very important actually set of, uh, I will say uh, data structures or concepts that will be used over and over. And we will mention some applications also when we talk about different algorithms. Let me share the screen. Uh, okay, so this is like the things. Do you see the screen? Yeah, we see the screen. That's great. Okay, so uh, let's uh, start uh, talking about this, about the graphs and trees. So uh, in general, uh, a graph, I mean, we will just represent it with uh, some something like this. And then we have, uh, this is a graph G. We have N vertices or nodes here. And there are uh, some uh, set of edges in between with the vertices. So we have a vertex set V of G, V1 to Vn, and H set E1 to Em. Generally, we have a graph G, we are saying the G is the V, E, and we are saying the size of V is equal to N, and size of E is equal to M. Uh, edges are the ones uh, that are connecting vertices. Uh, then, uh, as I mentioned, so if we write a UV or uh, curly bracket, a UV for an edge between U and V. So if it is U and this is V, we have this edge E. UV, and uh, if UV belongs to EG, then uh, U and V are adjacent. So here, for example, say this U and V are adjacent. And we will say U and V are the endpoints of uh, E. So it's an edge E between this guy. So this is the edge E. So uh, generally, as you have seen here, we can uh, show a graph uh, by assigning points to each vertex and draw a curve for each edge between these guys. Uh, I mean, this curve sometimes might be curly. And we try to avoid the crossing edges. So if this is the edge and this is the other edge that are crossing in this one, we try to avoid it if we can. If we can draw a graph without any crawling, so a graph without without crossing edges, Uh, is called planar. So if we can draw a, a, a graph on the plane without crossing of the edges, it is called the planar graph. And uh, you can think about, I mean, this one, there are lots of I mean, application. You can think about these are the intersection in a city. It might be the case that you are considering the cities on a map and then you draw uh, the different uh, routes between them, or you may think about the, these are the cities and these are the flight between them. You can think lots of objects. Uh, and we will give more examples uh, later as well. So uh, lots of uh, problems 
actually can be modeled uh, by graph. Another application is, for example, is the one that we say that these are the people, and uh, this is the friendship between them. These are the social graphs. <laughs> So a social graphs especially are very important. These are all so social graphs uh, are the ones that I mean the people if they know each other. Nowadays, lots of social graphs are directed graphs. I think probably except Facebook that you are uh, currently are both ways like for example at twitter linkedin instagram all of them if someone follows another person then uh, we say that so if you and we essentially is the case like that uh, then it means that this is a directed edge that goes from you to v you follows v and uh, this is called a directed graph Um, and uh, for directed, I mean, for undirected, we are doing generally say UV because the order is not important. This is for undirected. For directed, we have UV. So uh, just... And uh, sometime between two vertex, uh, U and V, so this is a vertex U, and this is a vertex V, there might be multiple edges. In this case, we will call it a these are repeated edges or multi edges. It's called multi edges. So this uh, multi edges are the ones that they are essentially repeated edges. There is also another concept which is called loop. So if there is an edge between from a vertex U to itself, it is called loop. So this is a multi-edge, and this is a loop. Uh, good. Uh, uh, a graph, a miss out. So a graph that, a graph that does not have multi-edges and does not have loop, it called a simple graph. So simple graph is a graph that does not have loop and does not have a multigraph. And uh, we mainly talk about undirected graph here. Uh, sometimes we talk about the directed as well, but uh, the current default is undirected graph. So it, an undirected graph that does not have loop and multi-edges, it is called a simple graph. Any questions so far? Uh, if it has loops or uh, multiple edges, it is called multigraph sometimes. Uh, also another thing, so the vertices, sometimes the, we will call it the vertices nodes and edges we call them arcs. Especially in the directed case, they will call it arcs, essentially means edges. And the uh, vertices they call nodes essentially or points also as well. So these are different names that we are doing. We mainly use vertices and edges. Uh, also a graph sometime instead of a graph, you will hear network. That's another name also for graph. And networks are generally a bit more general than the graphs. I mean, that's the thing. Uh, uh, great. So, any questions so far? So, uh, 
good. Let me just do these things. Give me one second, okay. I just want to make sure that I have. Mm. Recorded the meeting. So good. Now uh, let's go to the next page. Uh, good. So, uh, Uh, good. So um, we talked about a simple graph. So how many edges a simple graph can have? Please unmute and answer. So a simple graph has n vertices. How many edges we can have in a simple graph? N times n minus one over two. Yeah, n choose two essentially because and n choose two is equal to, I mean the number that you have mentioned, n times n minus one over, n times n minus one over two. So because any two pairs they can form a edge and there is a the order is not important because simple graphs are undirected graphs. But in general, it is order and a square. Now, uh, this, so uh, then we have two concepts of sparse graphs and dense graphs. So uh, a sparse graph, uh, there are generally dense graphs are the graphs that the number of edges is in omega of, uh, n to the one plus epsilon. for some constant epsilon. So these graphs are called dense graphs. So it means that, uh, uh, what is the, uh, I mean, the other one that we can do this, these are the sparse graph. So sparse graphs are the one that they set the number of edges is in omega of n. Or, I mean, sometimes we can also say in omega of n polylog n. Good. So, uh, in general, uh, so if the graph, the number of edges of the graph is order n or n, there, or n polylog, then it is called a sparse graph. If the number of edges is n to the one plus epsilon, uh, note that we discussed before in the order that n to the epsilon is larger than any polylog. Or like polylog is always little o of n to the epsilon. So if you have a little bit more than n, in particular n to the one plus epsilon, then it is called dense graph. Uh, but if it is order n or n log n, then it is a, a sparse graph. Uh, the graph that I mentioned, that the graph that you can draw in a plane without any crossing, these are called planar graphs. And actually, planar graphs are a sparse graph. So planar graphs are a sparse. So these are a sparse graph. Good. So that's the definition of a uh, planar uh, uh, edges. Uh, I mean, a typical graph, we, we may think about dense graph as uh, essentially omega n to the two, but the correct one actually is omega here, as I mentioned, n to the one plus epsilon for some small epsilon. So this is a more traditional definition, but again, you may see some book they define a dense graph as the one that has omega n square edges. That's possible, but generally we say that as long as it is a little bit better than, 
but into some like 1.1 essentially that is still considered a dense graph but some books may define it a bit differently uh good and now uh one uh other thing which is important. So what is the degree of a graph? So if you have a graph, then this graph, this vertex V, the degree of this vertex is, uh, it is called dig of V in a graph G. So the degree of V in G, uh, that is the number of adjacent edges to this vertex. So is the number of, as I mentioned, so this one is the number of vertices adjacent to a vertex. That calls the degree of vertex V. One important theorem is this one, that some of the degrees are equal to two times the number of edges. Any ideas? So this is probably one of the most important uh, initial basic theorems in graph theory, that the sum of the degrees. So if you consider all vertices of the graph and sum of the degrees of them, then it is two times the number of edges. Any ideas why is it correct? Each edge would connect to vertices. Yes, but you need to have a formal more formal proof. Any more formal proof? So, okay, so uh, let's do this one. You see, this is the one that is called double counting. This is a proof technique that is called double counting. What's the meaning of double counting? Double counting actually is a way of proving that it is very useful. You are, you are considering the same object and you will count it in two different ways essentially. And you know that because this is the same object, the number, both of them should be equal. Good. So let's do this one. Let's uh, consider each vertex of the graph and each vertex, uh, put a token on the edges that are connected to that. Good. So consider this vertex V, it is uh, putting a token on each uh, edge which is attached to that or adjacent to that. Good. So, and this is like other vertex. So this is another vertex U is doing the same thing. It's putting one token. Doing it, so every vertex is. Good. So uh, how many tokens did we put it on the, on the whole graph? Please unmute and answer. So here, uh, because each edge has two tokens. Uh, yes, uh, uh, let's, uh, you see, uh, that is the process that we try to cut it. Each vertex puts one token on each edge which is attached to that. We want to count the number of tokens. That's the thing that I call it double counting. So one way is that how many tokens do we have? We have, uh, this is the one that we have it. So one way is uh, that would be sum of degrees of V. For all V belongs to V of G. Correct, because each vertex puts one uh, token, these are the tokens. On each edge. 
So uh, how many tokens we are putting in total, uh, it would be degree of uh, some of the degrees over all vertices. That's one way. The other way is that, this is one way of counting. So one way of counting is this. So that's one way of counting. Correct. Now, another way of counting is that each edge, how many tokens does it get? Each edge gets two token because one from, so consider this edge, for example, it gets two token, one from here and one from here. So we know that the number of tokens should be two times E of G. So this is another way of counting. So, and because we are, <laughs> we are counting the same objects, namely the number of tokens in the graph, these two should be equal. So that's the reason that we have this theorem here. Is it clear? Good. So uh, here uh, we have this uh, property that actually this sum of the degrees are equal to two times number of edges. Uh, last but not least, also I wanted to define on this page, uh, let me clear everything. Also the concept of, so if you have a graph G, then a, an induced subgraph of this graph, which is H. So is the case that you will consider a subset of vertices? And then uh, you are, uh, and take all the edges in between. So uh, an induced subgraph of G is just represented by set V prime. If this is V, it has the set of vertices of G is V. V prime is the set of vertices of H. And what are the edges, all edges that exist on G? Then it is called induced subgraph. So induced subgraph will be determined only by this uh, V prime belong to V because E prime would be include all edges in E that both of uh, incident points or both of uh, endpoints are in V prime. Now, if we have this condition that uh, we are considering, uh, so this called induced subgraph, what is a subgraph itself is that we are considering a subset of uh, V prime of V and then among the edges, in the graph G, we also consider a subset of them. So if we consider just a subset, then it would be, uh, then it, uh, where was that? Uh, yes. Uh, yes. So uh, it is, it's called the subgraph. So it is called the subgraph if the V prime is a subset of V and E prime also is a subset of edges among the vertices in V prime in G. But if it contains all vertices of E that both endpoints are V prime, it is called induced subgraph. If there's any question, please unmute and ask. Unmute and ask. Uh, great. So let's, I think we are done with these definitions. So we have a set of definitions, these are important. And it is important that, I mean, you will uh, understand them because we are working with them a lot. Uh, good. There are uh, two ways to 
there are two ways to represent a There are two ways to represent essentially graphs. So we want to represent these graphs. I mean, these are some input to our algorithms. It generally is the case that when you have the input for as a graph, you have n the number of vertices and m the number of edges, and then the set of edges that are coming in a text file later. So we have n, m, and then the edge e1, which is actually e2, e3 and so on. So that's the input essentially, so input.txt. So this is the input file that you have it and you need to read it. And then you need to say, what is the data structure that you can uh, actually keep this uh, graph? Uh, so you can uh, think about either as adjacency list or adjacency matrix. So what is the adjacency list? Adjacency list essentially consider uh, it consists of an array, which is uh, so that actually you can do it. For example, at uh, C++ or at Python, you can easily implement it. So you have a, uh, an array of uh, you can see here an array of uh, size v. This is the array of size V. Uh, actually, maybe just is this one. So this is the array of uh, array of size V. Uh, I mean size size of V. I mean, and then each array is a linked list. So each array is a list. What are the list? These are the uh, vertices which are adjacent to that vertex. So you have, uh, you can have actually a vector or an array of lists, say in C++, or the same, you can have it at Python as well. Uh, you can have array of lists. And each list essentially says the, the number of adjacent, uh, the adjacent vertices in the graph. So for example, if this is the graph G, so you, you see, you can consider vertex one. So vertex one is connected to two and three. So you have two and then you have three. For, for vertex two, it is connected to one, to three. See here the vertex two. It's connected to one, three, and four, as you can see. Three similarly and four is just connected to two. So this is called the adjacency list of this graph. What about adjacency matrix? Adjacency matrix it would be simpler. So if you have a, essentially si the size of this matrix would be V times V. And then uh, IJ it would be one. So they essentially say um, here I will say A of A of IJ is equal to one if and only if uh, there is a IJ, the edge IJ belongs to E. So here, uh, this is a matrix A. This is the matrix A. And here the IJ here is equal to one if and only if there is an edge IJ belongs to E. Uh, for example, here, if uh, three and three here, so if there is a no loop in the graph, so three and three would be zero. There is no loop here. But here, for example, we say one, two. So there is an edge between one and two here. So then the corresponding C here, here is one. Or for example, and as you can see, this matrix is a symmetric because if if it is the graph is undirected graph, if one is connected to two, uh, then two is connected to one as well. 
So we have this asymmetric properties. Uh, good, so let me clean everything. So this is the adjacency list, and this is the adjacency matrix. Now, uh, this is important. If the graph generally is a sparse graph, so adjacency list would be a very good for a sparse graph. And this uh, adjacency matrix would be good for dense graph. But uh, that is important. Uh, note that, for example, some of these social networks, like Facebook, they have this limitation, like for example, at Instagram or like Facebook, I think uh, their limits might be a bit different. But for at Instagram, at Facebook, you cannot have more than 5,000 essentially friends. Or at Instagram, you cannot, I think, follow more than six or 7,000 people. You cannot follow more than this. Why? Because they don't want to have a dense graph. Because if it is the case, if the people, especially if there are bots, that they are going and adding uh, fake ages, then the whole graph, if they have, I don't know, uh, uh, active users at Facebook is say 2 billion, then 2 billion to the two would be just the size of this graph. And it would be horrible essentially for any algorithm to deal with it. And we cannot have any adjacency metrics like that essentially. So in that case, we want to make sure that it, as long as the graph is bounded degree, means that the degree of each vertex is, uh, is at most this number, uh, then this graph uh, is a sparse graph. And then they can represent it as an adjacency list, means essentially the people that you are following, for example. Uh, so this concept of a sparse general adjacency list otherwise would be them. Now, what is the difference between them? So the good things about adjac uh, uh, adjacency uh, list is that the memory of that we need for this is order V plus E. Why? Because, uh, I mean, these are essentially V, this is the array of size V, and then each of them is a linked list. But the size of this list, list is the sum of the, is the degree of each vertex. So what is the sum of the degrees would be two times number of edges. So the total size here would be essentially uh, v plus e, size of e plus size of e. So that would be v plus v. However, here. When we have the matrix, the size of this would be V square, like the memory, which is huge. Uh, however, there are some good things about adjacency matrix. Adjacency matrix, if you want to see an edge, IJ belongs to this, you only need to have order to so only you need to go to the uh, A of IJ and see whether this is zero or one. So checking that an edge exists between two vertex i and j is very easy, is order one, essentially in matrix, adjacency matrix. But for adjacency list, then uh, actually, so uh, say, checking, an edge, so checking an edge, I will say for uh, adjacency matrix is order is O of one, because we can just go and check it. But for adjacency list, is O of, uh, degree of, actually, let me say this one. So that would be of mean of uh, degree of V and degree of U. Good. So uh, here, 
Why? Because I mean, if you consider an edge, so we know that, uh, so we know what is u and v. We can go, for example, here, this is u and this is v. So we know the size of uh, the link list v and u, say we are actually, uh, the size of this link list, uh, we always keep it. So in that case, we know which vertex has the uh, lower degree, and we will go in its, say for example, here between two and four, we say that oh, v has a, we want to see whether the edge two, four exists in the graph or not. So we consider this two and v, we know that v four has a, uh, its uh, number of vertices is, uh, the, its degree is lower. So we will go there and we will see there in four, I can find two. And I find it and I understand, okay, there is a, so two is adjacent to four. So here, actually, we get uh, this fact that we will consider, again, between U and V, we will consider what is the degree of U, what is the degree of V, and say we are keeping this information, the size of this link list. And then we will go the one that has a lower degree, and we will go and see whether the other vertex is there in the list, and then there is the edge. So uh, this is the uh, good things about uh, I mean, adjacency matrix that we could do it order one, but here in adjacency list, actually we need to do it the minimum of the degree of V and degree of U. So in that sense, it's less efficient. So in terms of size of memory is more efficient adjacency list, but in terms of the see whether the, an edge exists or not, it's less efficient. So if you want to, so if you have a dynamic graph, so dynamic graphs are the graphs that the edges might be deleted or inserted. You can think about like, for example, Instagram or LinkedIn that you may uh, uh, follow and unfollow. So in that case, we have the dynamic graphs. So these are the dynamic graphs. And for dynamic graph, we have insertion. of edges generally or deletion. So we have, in for dynamic graph, we have insertion and deletion. So in that case, again, adjacency matrix would be easier because you can find that edge and just insert it, make it one or make it zero. But for adjacency list, you need to actually pay the minimum order of minimum of degree of V and degree of uh, U. But uh, as I mentioned, so if you have like a, uh, something like a Facebook graph, uh, so for example, the one that they have mentioned about Facebook and the number of active users are something like 2 billion, then in this case, uh, of course, I mean, we don't have a space to keep all these adjacency metrics and handling that would be very costly. So we need to go actually with sparse things. And as I mentioned, that's the reason that with Facebook or for example, at Instagram, you have the number of people that you can follow is limited, is bounded. Does it make sense? Do you hear me? Yes. Great. Okay, so if you have a question, please uh, interrupt and ask. So let me clean everything. So this is about adjacency list and adjacency matrix, which are two important things. Uh, uh, these are the things that I have just mentioned here that uh, if you have adjacency matrix representation of a graph then we are assuming the vertices are numbered between one to one two to v and the adjacency matrix it would be v times v array and this is the array i a of ij is equal to one if that edge belongs to e otherwise would be zero it needs an uh, order n square memory, but the good thing is that we can check and actually insert or delete edges in order one. Uh, good. 
so in this graph that we are considering, so generally I mentioned that we are using networks, the term networks also used for graph, but uh, networks are generally a bit like maybe more general. For example, uh, the edges in the graph, so the U and V, they may have a, a weight here. What, so what is this weight? This weight, for example, can be the uh, length of the path between U and V. So if these are the cities, uh, you want to say what is the distance between U and V? That would be the weight of the vertex. So this is like the. The weight of E, it can be the weight. I mean, the weight actually it is just called weight, but sometimes it might be called length as well. The length of U and V. Or it can be, for example, uh, uh, it can uh, represent other things like. Uh, uh, for example, if you have the, these are the cities, it can be the length of flight between two cities. That's another, or two airports. Or it can be, for example, uh, uh, that can also be uh, 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 represent uh, different things essentially. Uh, we will give more examples later here. Uh, from more real world examples. Uh, good. So these are the graphs that we have it and it can be weighted. Now, uh, another important thing is a complete graph. So what is a complete graph or a click? So a complete graph or a click is a simple path in which every pair of vertices form an edge. So when we say the complete graph or a click, it means that So this is a complete graph. Uh, actually. Hmm. Maybe it just. Uh, Okay, so uh, do you hear me? Yes. Good. So a complete graph is a graph that all edges exist between these vertices. So we call it complete graph or click. These are the two different names that we are using for that. So that all edges here, for example, and uh, generally, we are representing them by a graph we call it K5, KN. In this case, K5. These are all edges here are there. And note that these are crossing, these are not vertices. Generally, for vertices, I will put it something like essentially a cross or this type of circle. These are just crossing of edges, these are not the nodes of the graph. So, this is a K5. Uh, it means that a complete graph on n vertices. And as we discussed, I mean, a KN graph, how, how many edges does it have? So this graph has n choose two edges. So uh, a induced subgraph, uh, so uh, the independent set, independent set is exactly the reverse of that. So in an independent graph has exactly n vertices, but it has zero edges. So um, that's the difference between an uh, independent set and a complete graph. So complete graph has all edges. Independent set, essentially the same thing if you want, if I want to draw is something like this. So these are the set of vertices, but there is no edges in between. So actually we can say that independent set, uh, so uh, independent set and click. And click are complement of each other.
of each other. So what's the meaning of that? So a, a graph is a, a complement of another graph, so a complement of a simple graph. It, it generally, we say if this is the G, the complement, so G is for the graph itself, and G bar is the complement. If the graph is the same vertex set, but two vertices are adjacent in G, if and only if U and V are not adjacent in, so, so that it should be G bar. So, uh, so this graph, uh, uh, two vertices are adjacent in G prime if and only if U and V are not adjacent in G. So uh, again, uh, like if you want to represent it, we can just give, for example, one example here. As I mentioned, one example would be essentially a, a click. So this graph click versus independent set here. All edges that exist essentially in this graph. So this is G and this is G bar. Because all, uh, they have the same vertex set, but any edges that are here, it does not exist here and vice versa. Another example can be something like this. So consider this graph. Now, what is the complement of this graph? I will just draw it with another color. So those edges that exist, they don't exist here. So here, essentially, this is G complement, and this is G. So this is, a, a, and these two are complement of each other. So this is the concept of complement and a click versus uh, independent set, which are actually complement of each other. So let me clear all drawings. So a graph that is a very important and generally we call it, I mean, they have lots of application in marketplaces. So marketplaces uh, generally is the case that, uh, this is like you will hear it in lots of companies. They say that we have a marketplace. Generally, you can think about, for example, Amazon. These are the items that they have and the users that they have. And say, this, I, this user bought this item. So uh, these are, as I mentioned, so think about these are the items. And these are the users. And we have an edge between a uh, user U and an item I. If a user U buys item I. So this graph is called a bipartite graph. So we are seeing this one uh, a lot. This is called a bipartite graph. So uh, what is a bipartite graph? So bipartite graph, a graph is bipartite. If its vertex set can be partitioned into at most two independent set V1 and V2, uh, such that there is, of course, I mean, these are independent sets. So what are these ones? So if you consider this graph, items versus user, you can consider the whole things as a, So you can consider the whole things as your graph. But here we have two independent sets. One is the items, one is the users. What is the property of this? Is that there is no edges between uh, two items and no edges between two users. Or at least, I mean, there might be such kind of thing in a different graph, but in this particular bipartite graph, we don't care about the relation of items with each other. We only care about the fact that user U buys an item I. So in that case, uh, this is the essentially the definition that I have mentioned. Uh, 
we have users, we have items, and if you buy an item I, then we put an edge. So in some sense, in a bipartite graph, these are the two independences. So this, we call it the I. I is one set, and U is another set. Good. And here, I and U are independent set. Again, independent set means Uh, again, independent set means that uh, there is uh, no edges in between. Good. So here, independent, uh, these are uh, I and U are independent set if there is no edges in between. The, in between the vertices of I or the vertices of U. Does it make sense? And all edges here are in between. So this graph called a bipartite graph. Another application of bipartite graph, this is an example. So uh, uh, suppose that we have M jobs and N persons. And each person can do some of these jobs. Then we can uh, we want to find an assignment of, uh, so uh, what is the idea? So this is the things that, so assume that these are the jobs. And this is the people. Now, if a one person can do, so if this person I can, I mean, is professional in some of these jobs, then we are putting the edges between I and J. Now, we want to find, and say each person can do only one of these jobs at the end. There are some options, but we choose to, we want to, for each job, we want to select one person who can do the jobs and each person should get uh, also assigned to one job. This is the one actually, it is called a matching, which is a very important problem. So for example, this is the so this is the graph that is between these guys. And here this is a matching. So this one is there. This guy may do this case. This person may do this one and this. And as you will see here, for example, in this case, this guy, this job, nobody can find it. So this is these edges are called matching. So matching is a set of edges that none of them share an endpoint. So we cannot have such a things like this. Uh, and in this particular example that we have mentioned, the set of jobs that we have and set of people that we have, and we want to assign jobs to people such that each job is assigned to one person and each person is doing one job. This is the one, it is a matching. And this matching is one of the most fundamental problem essentially in computer science. Uh, it appears almost everywhere. Every place that there is a marketplace, matching probably is one of the most important problem there. Because it generally, I mean, when we have this kind of bipartite graph, uh, essentially a set, uh, we always have this kind of a uh, degree constraints that uh, like each item can be assigned to one person and each person can get at most one item. You might have more than one item, but uh, generally that also can be uh, represented by matching. So if as long as there is a bonded uh, bonding on the, some bonds on the number of items that a user can get or the bond on the number of uh, users that can be assigned to an item, uh, then this matching problem appears. So it is a very important problem. Good. Any questions so far? Good. 
Great. So let's uh, continue. So a complete bipartite graph is a bipartite graph in which H set consists of all pairs having between vertex V1 and V2. So as I mentioned, so in a bipartite graph, you can always consider this is a V1 and V2. And it is, uh, so if this guy has, I don't know, uh, for example, it's, they say this one has R vertices and this one has S vertices. Then a complete bipartite graph is the one that has all the edges in between. So for example, here in this case, it is, and this is represented by K33. So as I mentioned, if it is a just a complete graph, we will uh, represent it with Kn. So this is a complete graph, but a complete bipartite graph, we are representing it with K of Rs. Means that one of them has R, the other one has S. There is no edges between this V1 and no edges between the vertices in V2, but all these vertices, be, all the edges in between actually uh, are there. So KRS, how many edges does it have? Yeah, so that's correct. So KRS actually has R times S edges. Because each of these R guys that can be connected to S guys, so we have R guys here, R times S is the number of edges. However, for KN, the number of edges was, for KN, we had it in just two edges. So that's the difference between KRS and KN. So, for bipartite graph, we can have an adjacency matrix, which is simpler. It's a simpler adjacency matrix as follows. So we, instead of, uh, uh, because we know that there is no edges between V1, vertices of V1, and no edges between vertices of V2, then we can just represent this one as a, this matrix, this is the V1 times V2. Now, here there is an a, 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 essentially IJ. So this is a matrix A that has V1 and V2. And here, uh, AIJ uh, is equal to one if there's an edge between I and J and zero otherwise. So this is a vertex I here, and this is a vertex J here. This is AIJ. However, note that this is, so we were talking about the adjacency matrix for the whole graph, that was symmetric. It means that AIJ was equal to AJI. But here, uh, this vert, this vert, the vertex set here and here are different. So in that case, this uh, uh, matrix is not necessarily a symmetric matrix. So if you just consider adjacency matrix of a general graph, then that is symmetric. Namely, AIJ is equal to AJI, but it is not the case for bipartite graph. Good. So let me. Now let's talk about this concept of walk. So a walk of length k is a sequence v0 to vk of vertices, such that between any two vertices, there's an edge. So what is this one? So for example, consider v1, v2, v3. And then you may come after uh, uh, V3, you may go again to V1, and then we go to V5.
Okay, actually, this is like it came from V0. I think. So here, V0, V1, V2, V3, V4, and V5. So if you see, this is a walk actually. What is the property of work? We are starting from V0, we are ending at V5. And we know that between any two vertices here, there is an edge above. So there's an edge here, there's an edge here, there's an edge here, there's an edge here. So each of these two consecutive vertices, they have an edge in between. This is called a walk. Now, a path is a walk with no repeated vertex. Here, as you will see, V1, actually here, V0, V1, V2, V3, and after V3 is V1. So there is, in some sense, there is no V4, this is just V1. So here, vertex V1 has, is repeated actually twice here. So this is a walk, but not a path. A path is a walk with no repeated vertex. So that is very important. So a path is a, a walk with no repeated vertex. However, it is easy to see that if uh, there is a walk between two vertices. So if there, here there is a walk between V0 to V5, correct? So if there is a walk, There is a path. So here you see between the V0, V2, V. So we have V0, V1, V2, V3, then V1, and then V5. So between V0 and V5, there is a walk. However, V1 is repeated here. But we can see actually there is a path between them. What is a path? It is V0 to V1 and then V1 to V5. You can say that always when there is a walk between these vertices, there is a path between them. Why? Because we can actually remove this kind of cycles. So what is a cycle? So cycle uh, uh, essentially, uh, so a cycle in general is a walk that the first and last points are the same. So for example, here, V1, V2, and V3, and then V1, this is a cycle. And it is called a simple cycle if, again, there is no repeated path here. So sometimes when they say cycle, also they mean simple cycle. But in general, when we say simple cycle, means that there is no repeated vertex here. For example, this is a simple cycle as well. So this is a simple cycle because we have V1, we come to V2, and then V2, we come to V3, and then from there we go to V1. So there is, in some sense, there is no cycle uh, there is no repeated vertex here. So this is called a simple cycle. And uh, this is the idea, uh, I think this is the one that, I, this is a theorem that I have mentioned. That this is important. If there is a walk between two vertex U and V, then there is a path between these two guys as well. Why? Because uh, this is the idea that uh, whenever you will come to one vertex which is repeated, you can just simply delete this part from the walk and then continue with the rest. So whenever you will come back to this guy, just remove this part from the walk and then continue. And at the end, because you have removed all the cycles, there is a simple path between V0 to V5 in this case.
good. So the walk and path are essentially the same in terms of connectivity. So uh, what is this one? The next thing that we are talking about is the connectivity. So a graph, uh, an undirected graph is connected if for every pair of vertices, there is a path between them. So uh, like, uh, if you want to just give an example, so this graph, for example, if you have this one, if you consider this graph, this graph is not connected. Why? Because, I mean, there is no path if this is a U and this is a V. U and V, there is no path between them. However, if we add this edge, U and V between them, then the whole graph becomes connected. If we talk about the connected components, so what are the connected components? So if you consider the previous case, So if there is no edge between them, then we have two connected components. One connected component and second connected component. So that you can actually say that, uh, I mean, if you want to say it more formally, these connected components are equivalence classes of, vertex, of vertices under connected relationship. What's the meaning of that? It, it, I mean, this is a definition. You can actually, it's more formal definition. Uh, we will call it a equivalent class under a relation. If we have this property, reflexivity, uh, what is the reflexivity? It means that each vertex is connected to itself. Symmetricity. So this is uh, essentially, this reflexivity is that means that V and V are connected. Symmetry means that if V and U is connected, then U and V is also connected. And transitivity, what the transitivity, it means that if U and V is connected and V and W is connected, U and W is connected as well. And this is the one that you have. Uh, so it, it, if the relation is connectivity between the vertices, it can partition into equivalence classes. These equivalence classes are the set of vertices which are connected. All of them are connected to each other. And these are the connected components. So, I mean, if you don't want essentially to use this essentially more formal equivalence class, you can say that each connected component is a set of vertices in the graph that all of them are connected to each other. And of course, if uh, we have all of these properties, so if uh, always U is connected to U, if U and V are connected, then V and U is also connected. And if U is and V is connected and V and W is connected, then, uh, U and W is connected. And again, uh, connected means that there is a walk or a path between these two vertices. And as I mentioned, we mentioned in this theorem uh, that if there is a walk between them, there is a path between them. So again, a connected component is a set of, is the maximum set of vertices. Uh, so a connected component is a maximum set of vertices in a graph or maximal. Maximal means that you cannot add any more vertices to them. Such that any two vertices are connected and connected means there is a path between them. So and note that here also is a connected component. So th this is also this U and V are a connected, uh, I mean, subgraph. However, it's not a connected component because connected components should be maximal. It means that in this case, we can also add W to it. And because W is not there, it is not a maximal. So connected components are maximal set of vertices in a graph that all of them are connected to each other via path. So uh, that's the definition of connected components. So here, this is one connected components and the other one is, so we have two connected components here. So here we have two connected components as you can see. 
Uh, good. So I think that is a, a good stop. So we talk about all these definitions. Uh, please go through this lecture. And uh, I mean, I will put it also online. So you can go through that and you can see uh, all the definitions. Also, you can go to the this lecture notes and you can uh, go and read. Uh, good. So uh, next time we talk about trees and other things about the graph. So in the next few lectures, we talk more about graph and graph algorithm. These are very important. And uh, if you want, actually, you can also go. Uh, this, this is also important. If you go to Python, there is a there is a module called Network X. This Network X is very uh, important, actually. You can go there and uh, let me just see whether I can do it here. So let me just do this one. So let me actually. Okay, so uh, if you go here, this network X actually is the one, we will talk more about it, but this is the one that essentially is the all graph algorithms, et cetera, are implemented here, <laughs> the best state of the art. And it's a very good one to work with. We will talk some of them in more detail such that you understand exactly what's going on, but this is a good one that you can use it actually to do lots of graph algorithms and you don't need to write it from scratch. Uh, so you can do it, I mean, there are lots of things, essential data structures for graph algorithms and uh, several things that we may talk about them a little bit later as well in future sessions. Uh, great. Any question? If there is no question, I think we can just finish the course, the session today, and then we will talk more in the next session. Uh, bye, everyone.